I'm telling you guys, every time I, I take a look at my request thing, major kill is always in there. I have had to, I, like, a while back, I stopped watching new videos that he put out because so many videos were getting requested from him. Um, and I see why. I agree with a lot of the points that he makes. I agree with a lot of the things that he says. And he's, he's fun to watch, not just, just say it. Any case, he's going to be talking in this one about the Lost Primarchs. And the Lost Primarchs, 2nd and 11th Legion. Um, one of which was a shameful ordeal. The other one was not so shameful, but it needed to be done anyway. But both were considered traumatic. Um, they happened during the time of the Ragdan Xenocides. They probably were at the Ragdan Xenocides. That's probably what triggered whatever happened to them at the end of the day. In any case, I want to see what Major Chaos has to say because sometimes he knows stuff that I don't know. In any, here we go. Uh, I gotta hit the button. Gal, Games Workshop are very deliberate with what they flesh out and what they leave ambiguous. Some might say this is so the consumer can insert their own law into the gaps, True. but I reckon it's because they don't want to embarrass themselves with shite storytelling for key plot points. <laughs> Nothing has been left more mysterious than the identity and fate of the 2nd and 11th Legion in their Primarchs. As GW slowly begin to peel back the layers of the less known lore, like how they have gone in depth with the Emperor's Unification Wars and his mm -hmm. tragic Thunder Boys, I'm honestly expecting some concrete stuff from the Lost Legion soon. They have already dropped. I honestly hope we don't. We never find out that much. In fact, I like how they've gone out of their way to not have even the still existing traitor Primarchs talk about the second and eleventh Primarch. In fact, during one instance um, where a bunch of the Primarchs were together, Horus was a bit miffed about the fact that they were not talking, not allowed to speak about them, he tried to say it, Malkador cut him off and almost was to the point where he could have killed Horus um, to stop him from breaking the Emperor's edict on it. But in any case, moving right along, shutting up. Dropped us plenty of hints, enough hints to make this video, so I would say it's only a matter of time. Before we get started, I have a treat for you. When Cyberpunk 2077 was announced, I was still a virgin who had only just started high school, so it's pretty awesome to see it's finally is, coming out in only yeah. a couple of days. Hence, I've teamed up with Instant Gaming to host a giveaway okay. for you guys, where Instant Gaming will be giving away- So I'm going to fast forward through this one. The only reason I am, because I usually let his sponsorships play through and put them down in the description below if they're still valid. I know this one won't be valid. So I'm going to skip through this real quick. Some of the cooler fan made Lost Primarchs. As a disclaimer, I'm using obscure references and canon mentions of the Lost Legions in order to make my own conclusions and try paint a picture for you. While this picture should be pretty accurate due to me combing through the lore for all the times the Lost Legions are mentioned, I could also be very wrong about the final result. However, I'm also generally pretty wrong about clearly written lore, so this is just another standard Major Kill video. Tip, I, I think the total amount of times the Lost Legions have actually been referred to is total less than 30. Less than 30 instances where they were actually t spoken about in even one line of dialogue or one, va like one vague reference. Let's get into it. A lot of people believe that GW will never reveal the Lost Primarchs, as by having a blank spot for detailed lore, it allows people to create their own homebrew Primarchs. Well, those people, including anyone from GW who has confirmed that, are supremely retarded and should jump <laughs> off a bridge. Yes, GW has allowed and encouraged the use of homebrew Space Marine chapters, but that is all because all it takes to create a homebrew chapter is to color an Imperial Fist left pinky pink and then call them the Minge Destroyers. Voila, <laughs> new chapter. At most, you could then go on to kit bash a dildo on their head or print off a unique shoulder pad for them if you're really crazy about it. Mm. For a homebrew Primark, you would need to pay hundreds of dollars, if not more, to get a 3D modeler <laughs> to create your Primark from scratch right. and then get it printed. You would then have to spend hours creating a really cool backstory for them so that if anyone ever saw your Primark, their first reaction wouldn't be, wow, what a piece of shit. Blender. The point I'm trying to make is that GW has no real economic incentive to keep the Lost Primarchs mysterious for the sake of the incredibly tiny Primarch homebrew community. 
Now that's out of the way, let's start with the cold hard facts about the Lost Legions and their Do you hear them yelling? You hear them pugs yelling? They're always angry. Primarchs. We know for certain that the lost Primarchs are dead and that their deaths were pretty unpleasant. Their memory was struck from existence and anyone who dares speak of them would be put to death. So obviously they didn't go down screaming, FOR THE Emperor. It would be easy to say that Chaos got to them early, but that just wasn't the case. The majority of Primarchs were completely oblivious to Chaos, but knew a fair amount about their brother's downfall. We also know that by the time the Emperor found Corvus, the Lost Primarchs were already dead. Mm -hmm. Hence it's also a fact that their demise occurred reasonably early within the Grey Crusade. Another fact we know is that the Lost Legions fought in the Rangdang Xenocide, right. which was humanity's greatest challenge prior to the Horus Heresy, and I even made a video on it the other day. When they fought here, they were not yet disgraced and disbanded, and the death of one of the lost Primarchs is heavily believed to be because of the Rangdang Xenocide. More on that in a moment. We also know that when the Lost Legions got deleted, not all of them were purged and a large number of them were absorbed by other legions, mostly by the Ultramarines who experienced a large influx of new marines at the same time as the disbanding of the 2nd and 11th. Coincidence? I think not. Not really. Some word bearers even discuss the exact thing happening in canon, so I'm pretty confident this is the case. After all, even with chaos corruption and careful planning by their Primarch, one third of each traitor legion was still loyalist, so it's not hard to assume the same would come of the lost legions. So here is the big theory about the death of one of the lost Primarchs. I can't say which one, because GW hasn't made any fucking distinctions between the two of them, but that's unimportant. I mentioned this in my Rangdang Xenocide video, but basically the Rangdun, or maybe their sloth overlords, were known for their incredible mind control powers. I reckon that the Rangdun were able to corrupt one of the lost Primarchs and a lot of his legion over to their <coughs> cause, explaining why the Rangdang Xenocides were so challenging for the Imperium, mm -hmm. as well as why the Rangdang Xenocides have been mostly purged from Imperial records. There is absolutely no description or image of the Rangdung available, as I believe the Emperor didn't want it to be common knowledge that one of his sons had betrayed him. We that actually would make a lot of sense. That would make a lot of sense. The amount of mental control the Rangdung would have to basically push out would be to have to overcome Space Marine indoctrination, which would be intense. Um, you're talking not just standard brainwashing, but brainwashing to such an extent that it would quite literally overpower most anything. To overpower the will of a Primarch, or even a Space Marine for that matter, is something that only really Chaos can do, and that's after a long period of time, or massively extenuating circumstances. But for the most part, the um, you, you're, you're better off trying to get water from a rock. We could even go as far as to say that there was no Rangdung Xeno, and that the Rangdung was just a cover-up for a Legion-going traitor. This theory is backed up by the fact that Russ has hinted towards being the Emperor's executioner, and having experience when it comes to killing Primarchs. Obviously that experience doesn't count for much because he failed to kill Horus, Angron, and Magnus despite being in a position where he could have killed all three of them, but, you know, she'll be right. Mm -hmm. Russ also states that Astartes vs Astartes combat prior to the Horus Heresy had happened before. Now he could have been talking about the battle he had with that walking abortion advertisement Angron, <laughs> or he could have been talking about the Rangdung Xenocides, a war that he and his wolves took a large part in. Mm -hmm. From this, I can comfortably say that at least one of the lost Primarchs met their demise during the Rangdung Xenocides, the as they fought us. against the Emperor. The appropriate characters are in the right spot, i.e. Lehman was around and Corvus and his Raven Guard were not, the timeline is reasonable, mm -hmm. and the mystery of the entire event all clearly points towards this. Now whilst there's a chance that the other lost Primarch died here as well, I really don't think they did. It was stated by Rogel that each lost Primarch experienced a different tragic demise. Mm -hmm. The clues for the fate of the remaining lost Legion Primarch might lay with Sanguinius. When Horus caught Sanguinius culling one of his sons who had fallen to the Red Thirst, Sanguinius begged Horus not to tell the Emperor, as he believed that if Father found out about the Blood Angel's gene flaw, they would suffer the same fate as the Lost Legions. The death of the missing Primarchs was 
tragedies. Their deaths weren't glorious, yet the Lot legions weren't despised. People just kind of felt sad about what had happened to them. Hence, the other Lost Primarchs succumbing to a serious gene flaw and then being put out of their misery could have been what happened. This theory can be rebuked by saying, if one of the Lost Legion's gene flow was so bad that their Primarch had to be deleted, then how come a large part of the Legion was able to join up with the other Legions such as the Ultramarines? Well, to this you could say that only a certain percentage of the Legion, including the Primarch, experienced the gene flaw, or you could say that when the Emperor ordered said percentage of the Legion to be culled, the Primarch refused to do so and rebelled. Lord what also could have happened is, um the the taint of whatever had happened could have applied only to the the home world of set primark and the marines that were made on that home world were subject to the same kind of corruption that occurred to the primark and that would actually make sense considering the timeline of when the primarchs were discovered because the primark could have wound up um making a bunch of marines from his home world and then all of a sudden with the majority of the Legion still tearing stock, they run into a situation where the um, corruption of the the corruption of the gene suit actually happens, and it's applicable to that homeworld. Sorry, I had a coughing fit. It would be the kind of the same thing that happened when um, uh, Nocturne, the effect that Nocturne's radiation had on Vulcan and the uh, sons of Vulcan that were actually made on Vulcan not Vulcan, made on um, Nocturne, where it turned their skin obsidian. Um, but it might have been a more drastic effect. In any case, moving on. Lorga also mentioned that he feared the Emperor would do the same to him and his legion after the Emperor mind-raped him for being too religious. But while Sanguinis was certain that fate awaited his legion, Lorga just kind of said it as a, Daddy is mad at me. Please, Daddy, not the belt. <laughs> There doesn't much. seem to be a huge consensus from the different writers about what happened to the Lost Legions. Most paint the Purge Primarchs as tragic <coughs> accidents, while others heavily imply that they needed to be culled. It's also hard to determine if the Lost Primarchs crimes were so great that they had to be purged from existence, or if the Emperor just wanted to maintain the propaganda that his Space Marines and Primarchs were unbeatable and infallible. Now, I yeah, one of, from what I'm understanding from the lore that I've read, there's only out of the two Primarchs, both of them were considered tragic. Both of their ends were considered a tragic affair that even traumatized the Emperor. But out of the two, only one of the two Primarchs is accorded shame for what happened. And what I take that to mean is a decision was made by that Primarch that led to a certain amount of shame. The other one was just simply sad. So take that for what you will. Well, I did say that people who wanted the missing Primarchs to stay ambiguous so they could have their own homebrew Primarchs were retards, and I stand by that. However, a couple homebrew Primarchs have been made anyway, so I'll pick out a couple of my favorite. There we go. First off, we have Ikarion the Stormborn of the Second Legion, the Lightning Bearers. Off the bat, the Primarchs were missing a Japanese-inspired Primarch. It was like GW True. said, we got a Mongolian, you know, what else is there? And forgot that if Warhammer had been allowed to take off in Asian countries, they would be worth a bazillion dollars, and that nobody in Mongolia can afford motorbikes. Ikarion <laughs> is the Primark equivalent of a noble samurai who wielded incredible elemental powers based around, you guessed it, lightning. Now, from the fan lore made about him, his demise and fall doesn't seem to be connected to the Rangdung Xenocides. I would say that his son's tendency to electrocute shit, as well as being a bunch of sushi-eating pussies who didn't want a genocide oh in the Emperor's God. name anymore, led to them getting excommunicated. There is an amazing artwork here that details the end of Ikarion and his sons. It depicts Russ and Ikarion having a final conversation before Russ kills Ikarion in a duel. The conversation basically goes Russ being like, I don't want to have to kill you, but you turning your back on us has left me no choice. And then Akarion is like, really? Then Russ is like, really? eat death, you fucking weeb. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's more or less how it goes. Okay. The unique style, design, and abilities of Akarion are impressive and would easily allow him to stand out as a fan favorite from the rest of his brothers. You know, if you didn't get killed, then deleted. There's actually a lot of cool artwork for this guy and his legion, so if someone wants to flesh out their lore a bunch, or send me a link to a lore page about them that I was unable to find myself, then I might end up making a video on him. 
My choice for the 11th Primark is a bit harder because Akarion just kind of shits on everyone else's homebrew Primarchs, mm. but I'll have to go with Raktra Akaro, Primark of the Ursan Berserkers. Because, okay. you know, he kind of looks like the guy that would get mind controlled by the Rangdung. The true. issue with Raktra is that his creator decided to pile him into a fan made version of the 40k universe that has different fan made Primarchs for each Legion. Mm. Whilst this is cool, I guess. It means I can't use much of his lore to describe him here, as it would make absolutely no sense. This is why fan-made Primarchs is stupid. <laughs> Basically, Raktra was a raging asshole that could match Angron with how much of a ruthless dick he was. At least Angron had an excuse via the nails in his brain. Raktra just kind of sucked as a person. However, he was a master hunter and an apex predator <laughs> of his planet, growing up in a gang of a hostile world that had been ravaged by the Age of Strife. Mm, when the yeah. Emperor arrived, Raktra was excited to finally meet an individual more powerful than he, hence he agreed to serve the Emperor. Well, when he discovered that his role of a Primarch was to protect humanity, not teabag it, he got pretty <laughs> upset. With how powerful and ruthless he was, as well as how cooked his brain seemed to be, he would be the perfect candidate for the Rangdung Xenocide's Primarch. Fan-made stuff is cool. Okay. Canon lore is cooler. Give me some canon missing Primarchs, or just make it carry on canon, and I'll be happy. And that does us for today, guys. The lore and story of what we know about the missing Primarchs and their legions. If you enjoyed the video and want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. Oh where only $1 per month gives you access to a boatload of Warhammer Hentai. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more missing content. Alright. So that's... The missing Primarch. Now, there's a lot of stuff that he left out in this one. That's not that's not something I'm normally used to from him. Um, the two Primarchs, the second and the eleventh, one of them died during the Xenocides. The other one died e either at the near the end of the Xenocides or immediately in the aftermath. Um, one was most certainly due to a gene flaw, and the other one was. Who knows? Um, there have been several instances where they have been mentioned, but there's just not a lot of information. A lot of it is um, just vague references followed by somebody telling them pretty much don't talk about this. Um, but yeah, the Lost Primarchs are one of those bits of lore that I hope stay a mystery. I don't want to find out. I don't want to know about them. The fact that, you know, it's been this well done up until now, for me at least, is it, it would feel kind of cheap if they were revealed. Um, and that's just not... It's, it's kind of like when I found out what the Emperor's name was. I was just sitting there and I was like, um... Okay. Um, I guess. Um, I really did not enjoy that part of the story that much. In any case, drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, I'm going to be putting Major Kill's information down below. Unfortunately, his promo has probably gone out by now, so if you guys were looking to get in on that, sorry, Cyberpunk's been out for quite some time now. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys next time.